Today we're going to talk about the top 10 things that you need to know about baby led weaning. So many things online are really confusing or are just not true. And I am here to make it clear for you so that you and your baby can start eating today. Let's do this. All right, let's start with a little background, a little history. Baby led weaning has been around for a very long time, but it became popular in the early 2000s. And actually, the person who coined the term once said she wished she called it baby led eating. Because sometimes people get worried about the word weaning. They think that you have to wean down your breast milk or your formula. And that's not true. When we get started, we're not weaning the formula or breast milk just yet. But we'll get into that. Next, it's important to know that the most important part about baby led weaning is being baby led. You can be baby led for everything. That is the most important part. It's not about it being solid or never using a spoon or anything else that you might read online that you have to be strict about this. It's about giving your baby that control, them trusting you and it being an enjoyable experience. And that goes right into the battle of purees versus solids. People have sent me many articles online about people saying you can't ever use a spoon or it has to all be solid food if you want to be really baby led weaning. And that's just not true. We don't need to eat one thing strictly over another. I've been a feeding therapist for more than 10 years, and I can say in my experience helping thousands of families, a combination of purees and baby-led weaning techniques really helps. There's no research to support that one is better than the other, but there is research to show that if you are baby-led in however you do it, whether it's starting with the bottle or with a spoon or with a solid food, when we make it baby-led, babies are less picky more interested, and more engaged. And it gives them a better relationship with food from the very beginning. The things that you do now will pay off for years to come. Children whose parents are strict about feeding, who force them to eat in a certain way or or force them to eat certain foods, grow up to have lots of problems with food and a tricky relationship with food. So the most important thing that you can take away from the baby-led weaning experience is remembering to be baby-led. Let your baby lead you. All right, so say you're on board. Let's say you're in and you're ready to start. So where do we start? What do we actually look for? So I always look for three things. Before you start, of course, you always want to talk to your medical team. Only you and your medical team know what's best for your baby. But generally, we look to see if they are safe, practicing, and interested. And what does that mean? Are they safe? Are they at least four months old? And four months adjusted, if your baby was a little bit premature, we're going to use their adjusted age to make sure that they're at least four months old. We want to make sure that we are checking with our medical team, especially if they've had any problems with breathing or swallowing, problems with their breast milk or formula, eczema, or belly issues. We want to double check before we start this process. And we want to make sure that they're more or less having some good trunk support. That means that they can sit up with help that their head is not falling over and they're not flopping right to the side. They don't need to be sitting up on their own. I'm gonna give you tips on how you can make them comfortable. Next is practicing. Practicing looks like, are they mouthing toys? Are they bringing toys or their hands to their mouth? Are they starting to stick their hands in their mouth and bite down on their fingers? Or still getting coordinated, trying to bring those new toys toward their mouth? And interested. Are they interested in you eating? Are they looking at you eating, even leaning toward you when you're eating or pulling at your hand? Are they opening their mouth or getting excited when they see their bottle or your food? Safe, practicing, and interested are the things that we will use to decide if our baby is ready for the next step. This next part I call setting the scene. We want to make sure that your baby is starting to get the concept that we are going to eat real food together sitting in a high chair. So first things first, let's get them comfortable in the high chair. Like we talked about, your baby doesn't have to be sitting up completely on their own. But if your baby feels a little bit slouchy or they get a little bit tired after sitting up for a while, what we want to do is put them in a high chair that fits. We want to put the straps on and then we can take some dish towels or some burp cloths and roll them up and we're going to put them next to their belly and their hips to give them some extra support. That helps them when they start to get tired that they won't slouch down to the side. It's really important that your baby thinks this is a positive experience. And if they feel that they're slipping out of the high chair, it's going to be scary for them and they're not going to be interested in eating. So please don't skip this step. Give them some time to play in the high chair. The next thing that we can do is give them some bowls and spoons, but without any food on it yet. 
so we can give them the idea that we play with our bowls and our spoons and our cups and this is where we sit. We don't have to jump into eating just yet. Give them a little bit of time to play in the high chair first. And depending on your baby, they might be ready to go right away. They might be ready for food and we can get into that. But if your baby looks a little bit hesitant or they look a little uncomfortable, let's give them a few days in this practice. Give them their bowls and their spoons for a few minutes. Let them sit in the high chair while you eat a snack. And we can do this right before you give them their bottle or you breastfeed. When they're starting to look more comfortable, then we can head to the next step. All right, now that we know they're comfortable in their chair, we're going to go to the next step, which I call messy playtime. Now we're going to give our babies the food, whether that's purees or those soft, solid foods. We're going to give them the experience of playing with it before we encourage them to eat it. For these first few weeks of really eating food, we're not looking at their intake. We're not looking at their calories. Right now, it's still about the experience. So don't worry, this isn't going to mess up their feeding schedule or their bottles or their breastfeeding. This is about the experience and getting the concept down. So don't be afraid to get messy. If messy is not your thing, what I recommend is taking off all their clothes and doing it right before bath time. Giving them the chance to play with that puree or with that soft solid food on their tray. If we're going to do it, just commit. Pour a little bit of puree or put some food right down on their tray and see what they do. Try to finger paint with it or show them that this is fun. Lick your finger and show them that it's food. They will get the idea that this is a fun time that we share together. If you are going to do spoon feeding, I encourage you to watch this video where I talk about what to do and what not to do with spoon feeding. It's important that we're still being baby led, that we're still watching for their cues and waiting for them to tell us when they're ready. After they've gotten the idea down, they're getting excited about food, they feel comfortable, then we can go into happy tastings, which that means it's just a tasting. Like I said, we're not worried about their weight or their schedule or how much they're actually eating in the very beginning. So here, maybe your baby is excited, but they can't quite get the food to their mouth. You can help them to guide the food to their mouth. In these ways, we're asking them for permission. They have their mind made up and they really want to eat, but they need a little bit of help to get coordinated. And that's where we can jump in. After we know we have the green light, then we can give them a little bit of help. All right, great. Let's go into the next step. This is all about your reaction. It's really important that you and your family and any other caregivers have really positive reactions to your baby's eating, but I know it can be a very scary time. It feels a little bit nerve wracking when you're giving your baby these foods for the first time. You're worried about them gagging or choking, or you're not really sure how much to give them. You're not sure how to respond or what to do next. So go and watch my video all about gagging and choking. I want you to feel comfortable knowing what to look for for your baby if your baby is gagging and they're really okay, or if God forbid we have an emergency, that you know how to respond. If your baby is indeed gagging, or maybe they're just making a big mess, it's really important that you have a positive reaction to this. Try your best to keep it positive, even if you're faking it. Try to be happy and relaxed. Your baby can feel your stress. So if we are determined that we really want them to eat something or we're forcing them to eat one more spoonful, they're going to feel that stress and then they associate negative things with mealtime, which is definitely not what we want. If your baby is gagging a lot or they really wanna put things in their mouth, you can also give them teethers and toys that are safe to bite on. This will help them to get that chewing motion down, to give them any relief when they are teething and this will help with eating down the road. All right, so we've practiced, we've gotten messy, we're comfortable and we're ready to go. Now, what do we actually give them? All right, we really want to make sure we're keeping our babies safe. So down in the description box, you will find my essential guide to starting baby food. In there is a great list of choking hazards and how to prepare your food safely. Please check it out to make sure that we are giving our babies food that is safe. And now let's talk about how to prepare the food safely. I call these my three S's. We think about, does it pass the squish test? What is the size and is it safe? So first things first, the squish test. I tell parents if you can gently squish it between your fingers, that's about as much safe pressure as they can make with their little gums. So if it's too hard, like for example an apple, if you push down on that, it doesn't really move. So that means that would be a choking hazard. That would be too hard for them just yet. But if we bake that apple or if we pick a softer food like a banana, that would be something safe for them to eat at this stage. 
Next is size. A lot of times in baby led weaning, people get very excited about the size, that it has to be a certain shape or a certain size. And I will tell you, it doesn't have to be a specific shape. Certainly, we want to avoid things that are small and round that would block your baby's throat. That would be a choking hazard. But aside from that, you can go bigger. Usually, we do use a rule that it is about the size of your index finger, that it's long and it's not too big, but we can even go much bigger. Babies love to have something to hold in their hands and bite or gnaw on. A lot of my patients love to have a big strawberry or a big piece of toast. That gives them a lot of room to make sure that it's safe, but then they can bite all around it to get more comfortable. And next, is it safe? Of course, again, check in that list of choking hazards. And if you're giving them something else, we want to make sure that if it's meat or vegetables, that it's cooked thoroughly. Are the vegetables soft? Is the meat cooked all the way through? We want to make sure that that part is safe. So again, the three S, does it pass the squish test? Is the size bigger than your finger? And is it safe? All right, in the very beginning, there is one exception to the rule that if your baby is still very early on in this process and they're getting down the idea of moving their jaw and starting to chew on foods, what you can do is give them something very big and hard to gnaw on. Some of my favorite things are pizza crust, a slice of well-cooked steak, and pineapple core. These are things that are really hard. It would take a lot for them to really bite off a piece. But for a few moments, that would be a great thing to practice with. So I always say on pizza night, don't be afraid to cut off your pizza crust and give it to them. And usually you can tell when those babies are teething, they really shove it way far back where their gums are and start to bite down. We really want to see that motion of that up and down chewing, that they're starting to get the idea that if you bite down, something good happens. For example, if you give them a big piece of well-cooked steak, that's really hard for them to eat, but we can give them the concept of biting down and those juices come out. Those are still filled with lots of nutrients and it gives them a great connection with chewing makes something happen. The same thing with a pineapple core, that middle part of the pineapple that we usually throw out. It's really hard in the middle. What I'll do is I'll cut all the way around it and I'll keep that middle part for them to bite on. It's pretty slippery, but it's very fun for them to gnaw on. This really helps with those aching gums and it helps them to get down that motion of chewing. All right, now let's think about what things we do not want to feed our baby. There are three things I want you to remember. First, we're not going to give our baby pure honey until they're at least 12 months adjusted. So that means pure honey, like the liquid form from a jar, we're not going to give that to them. Next, we're not going to give them whole milk. You can certainly give them whole milk products like yogurt and cheeses. Those things are really good. But we're not going to give them whole milk in the bottle until they're 12 months adjusted. And then next, we're going to make sure that we are avoiding choking hazards as much as possible. Again, check the link in the description for the essential guide to starting baby food and you'll get a list of what things to look out for to keep your baby safe. All right, now let's get to the good stuff. What are we going to feed them? What are we going to start with? So I like to start with A, B, C, avocado, banana, and carrot. These things are typically low allergen foods. They're relatively easy to find and prepare. So let's do it. First, avocado. We're going to take a ripe avocado. You can mash it up or you can puree it with your baby's breast milk or formula if you want to do purees, or you can give it to them in the solid form. Take out the pit in the middle and give them a big piece of avocado that's ripe enough for them to eat. Next, banana. Same thing, you can mash it up and put it in the blender with breast milk or formula for the puree form, or you can cut it in half and give them a big piece to hold. You can keep the peel on and peel it down a little bit so it's not so slippery and see if they will start to bite on it. Next, carrot. Carrot, you can boil the carrots and again, make it into a puree or you can keep it into a solid form. You can bake, boil, or steam these carrots, then you'll cut them into a long strip like we talked about, longer than your finger, and see how they do. Of course, any baby can be allergic to anything, but these are typically low allergen foods that are relatively easy for most babies to digest. So this is a good introduction to eating more solid foods. So start with the ABCs and let me know how it's going. After you've done the ABCs or after you're starting to feel comfortable, I want you to really think about your shopping list. What foods do you usually have in the house? What foods do you and your family usually eat? We really want to start to incorporate the family's food as soon as possible. We always want to keep them safe, but we want to give them the same foods and the same flavors that they're going to grow up with. So there's no better time to start. 
All right, next, after you've given them a few foods, what we want to talk about are those top allergens, those allergens that can be really scary for families. We want to make sure that we are watching safely for those reactions just in case. After we've gotten those introductions down, then we can start to have more and more fun with food without having to worry that your baby might have an allergic reaction. All right, next we're gonna talk about introducing those allergens with my other three S's. I call them slow, small, and spaced out. When we're first introducing allergens to our baby, we're going to do it slowly. We're going to introduce them a very small amount and we're going to space them out at least one whole day so that we can watch for reactions. So we'll go one by one and space them out at least a full day. After you know that your baby has had some introduction to that allergen, we can mark it off our list and keep an eye on it. But we want to get these out of the way very early on in your baby's eating journey. The research shows that when we have early and repeated exposure to those top allergens, we're less likely to develop issues down the road. So we want to go slow, small, and spaced out right from the start. All right, those top nine allergens that we're going to look out for are wheat, egg, milk, and any of the whole milk products, soy, sesame, fish, shellfish, peanuts, and tree nuts. Like we talked about, anyone can be allergic to anything, but these are the top nine allergens that we see right now as the most common. So we'll introduce these very slowly and we'll get as many exposures as we can in those first few months to build up their experience with that. All right, one of my favorites to start with is toast. I love introducing wheat as one of the first allergens because then we can use this as sort of a utensil to introduce the other allergens. So first, we're going to pick whole wheat toast. We're really going to toast it in the toaster. We want the bread to be crunchy and toasted. We don't want it to be regular bread and not toasted. It becomes really sticky and tacky and it can be really difficult for babies and even a choking hazard. So we really want to toast it. What you can do is toast one piece of bread to start. Don't put anything on it yet. Toast it and then cut it into four long strips. Then what you'll do is give your baby a strip of toast. We'll see how they do. We'll help them to get it to their mouth and see how they do. We want to give them that exposure. Again, we're only giving them a small amount. We're doing it very slowly. If in the first few moments of your baby having this first wheat experience, they start to get a rash or show any other symptoms, we'll take that away right away. In the description box, you'll see in the essential guide to starting baby food, there is a great list of what things to look out for for a possible allergic reaction. But let's say, hope, fingers crossed, that they don't have any reactions to the wheat. We're going to give them one full day to make sure that they don't have a reaction. I love giving these new foods right in the very beginning of the day for breakfast. The reason is that we can have the whole day to see if they have any reactions. Reactions on their skin, are they uncomfortable, are they having any diarrhea or blood in their stool? We'll be able to see that throughout the whole day. Whereas if we give it at dinner, we might have a rough night and we're not really seeing how they do for many hours. So start your day with the allergens and let's see how they do. After they've had one full day with the toast, then you can see, okay, it went well, we can go on to the next one. All right, then you can introduce butter. That butter, that whole milk butter is going to be another allergen. So we'll put a thin layer of butter on there, give them that toast, and again, watch for reactions. That will be in a whole day and we'll see how they do. The following day, we can add some more of these toppings. Again, one day apart is perfectly fine. While you're doing this, you can still offer them other foods. You can offer them other foods that they've already had or other things that are not a part of this high allergen category. So for example, say we're doing toast, we're on day two of toast and we're adding a little bit of butter. We can go back and add some more avocado. We can have some bread with avocado because we've already had that. Or we can have toast with a side of banana. Those things that we've already had that the baby is comfortable with, we can add while we're still introducing these allergens. All right, these are my favorite toppings. We want to keep the layer pretty thin so that we don't overwhelm the baby or make it hard for them to swallow. But some of my favorites are, we can add a thin layer of avocado or guacamole. We can add a thin layer of peanut butter, again, which is a top allergen, so that would have its own day to make sure that we are safe with that allergen. Cream cheese, which is another milk allergen. Hummus on top of bread is often a hit with babies, but again, hummus made with tahini is a top allergen, so we'll make sure to give that its own day as well. 
then we can introduce a variety of nut butters. We'll introduce those like an almond butter is great. Again, give it its own day with the toast. We can do smashed beans, smashed egg, of course, another top allergen. We can have meat purees, butter, then butter with cinnamon, which is one of our favorites. Butter with a thin layer of yogurt or cottage cheese, which is a whole milk allergen. As you can see, a lot of these are top allergens, so don't be afraid. I am here for you and we can go step by step. My best advice is start your baby with a few foods that you know are safe, like those ABCs. Once you have those down, then you can start to introduce more wheat toast with these toppings. If it is a high allergen, we want to give them one full day at a time to make sure if your baby has a reaction, we know why. We know what it's for. After you've gotten through these allergens, your baby will have an exciting breakfast. If your baby doesn't have any allergies, we can get to the point where they can have a really fun breakfast. They can have toast with avocado and cream cheese and eggs with a side of banana and a little bit of strawberry. We can make it really fun. So in the first few weeks of trying this, it's really important that we're introducing it safely. But then we want to keep the repetitions going. We want to continue offering those top allergens so that your baby gets repeated exposure. So make sure that you're spacing out those allergens, keeping an eye on those reactions, and then we can add that to their growing list of foods. And that goes right into our next point. We don't want to stay with one food. We don't want to give them 10 days of carrots in a row. We want to give them a lot of variety. It's good for so many reasons to have that variety. It's good for their belly. It's good for their experience. It's good for their taste buds. It's good for them to have a positive experience. And we are getting closer and closer to eating the same food that you're eating. All right, now that we're getting into a flow and your baby is starting to eat more, around six months, we want to make sure that we are giving our babies additional iron. After your baby turns six months adjusted, we want to make sure they're getting adequate iron. So some of the foods listed here can really help with their iron intake and absorption. So check it out. Again, some of these are top allergens, but we know what to do with those. All right, here I have listed great foods that are high in iron and other foods that are a really great complement to those foods that help your baby to absorb those nutrients, to absorb that iron really well. And often the babies like how they taste together. So some of our favorite high iron foods for babies right now are hummus or smashed chickpeas, eggs, black beans, spinach, any of those nut butters on toast that we talked about, prunes, salmon, oatmeal, chicken, and beef. And to give that extra bang for your buck, some of my favorite combinations that babies really seem to love are oatmeal with peanut butter, chicken and carrots, turmeric and black pepper. You can mix that into smoothies and other foods, which are really great. Broccoli with fish, brown rice with garlic and onion, tomato sauce with olive oil with pasta, hummus and whole wheat bread, rice and beans, eggs with cheese, whole grain toast and nut butters, and my favorite, guacamole and salsa. All right, those are some of my favorite combinations and foods that are high in iron that we can mix into the foods that you usually eat. I want you to think about your family's food. This is the important part about baby-led weaning. They can still be baby-led. We're letting our babies guide us, lead us, but we can be with our food that they're going to grow up eating in our house. They don't need special foods. They don't need special things. They need to have real food that is really yours. Next, I want to give you a few notes here. As your baby starts to get older and their physical abilities start to develop, they're going to get a little pincer grasp. That means they'll be able to pick up things that are really small. And around 9 or 10 months adjusted, you might see this start to develop. So now, if your baby has had really good practice with those bigger foods that we talked about, how we cut those pieces really big, and they were able to start to bite on those, now they're going to be able to practice two things. They're going to be able to practice picking up those little pieces of food that we chop into little pieces, but also they'll be able to practice chewing in a more mature way now that they're growing up to be a big kid. So when your baby is around 9 or 10 months adjusted, when you see them start to grab those things in that little pincer grasp like we talked about, you can start to cut the food up into little pieces. My favorite hack for this is keeping a pair of kitchen scissors. Scissors that are made for food are a really great thing to have in your kitchen. You can cut things up into little pieces and make your life a little easier. Okay, next, let me give you a little word of caution. If you are giving your baby some purees, that's great. 
But then what happens is parents will say, I want to make it thicker. I want to make it more advanced for them to eat, more like mashed potatoes. Sometimes what parents will do is that they make it chunkier with little chunks of food inside of the puree. And I would say I would hold off on that because what happens is if your baby recognizes the texture of something and they think that it's something that they can swallow and we put a couple chunks in there, we might startle them. And now we might get into a gagging or choking experience. So we don't need to put little chunks in there. We can make everything thicker like mashed potatoes, but we don't need to put things in there that are mixed in. We don't want to surprise your baby. So there are different ways to make it more advanced, but I would say we don't need to put chunks of food in there. Sometimes in the food that you buy in the store, it comes with chunks of food mixed in. And I've seen a lot of babies who have negative experiences with that because their brain thinks it's something that's soft and you can just swallow it back. But then if we surprise them and put chunks in there, we can scare them. So try your best to make it thicker overall and introduce new foods, but we don't need to put any chunks in there. All right, another tip I'll give you, when your baby is about nine to 10 months adjusted, what might start to happen is that they become more independent. And around this time, I'll get a call from a family that's saying they were eating so well and now all of a sudden they're refusing to eat or they're throwing their food down. My one favorite trick that helps a lot is to give your babies some alone time. I call this lovingly ignoring them. Giving them some alone time or looking away while they're eating really helps. We always want to keep our eye on them, of course, whether we're watching them from behind or out of the corner of our eye. But around this time, developmentally, kids really want a little bit more breathing room. And so you can imagine if you were sitting in your high chair and someone was staring at you for months and months, even though our intentions are good, you might get sick of it. So now your baby needs a little bit more time to be independent. So if you see more food on the floor or your baby is resisting a little bit, don't be afraid to walk away and pretend to wash a dish or go and grab something from the kitchen. This really gives them a little bit more time for fun to explore the food and then eat it while they think they're not being watched. All right, our last tip for baby led weaning is I want you to keep the big picture in mind. Remember that we are working our way toward your baby eating your food. You want to think about them sitting at the table with you eating one meal that you prepare for the whole family. So there's no better time to start introducing your real foods than right now. And we can start to think about avoiding that picky eating stage that might be coming. While every baby is different and their needs and their preferences are different, what we know and what the research shows us is that when your baby is exposed to many foods many times in a positive way, they learn to love food even more. So I always say to parents, if there was one magic equation that I could share with you, it would be exposure plus repetition minus pressure equals interest. That means the more that you expose your baby to food in a positive way many times throughout the day without the pressure that they need to eat everything, the more interested they'll be. Remember that you started this journey because you wanted it to be baby-led. We can still continue that even into those toddler years and beyond. Let your baby guide you. You still get to decide what foods you're going to provide. Remember to keep it real and really the things that you and your family eat. But do your best to let your baby guide you. Give your baby that control. Take a deep breath and know that you are giving your baby a beautiful gift. The gift of having a great relationship with food moving forward. Please let me know how it's going. Reach out to me. I'm always here to help. You are doing a great job. And for more baby feeding videos, check this one. (laughs) Ha ha ha!